Way Home or Face the Fire by Ja, the survival plan for all human plus beings. Chapter 3 The Creation of Human Animals One Flesh, Matthew 19, 5 and 6 And said, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Mark 10, 6-9 But from the beginning of creation God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and cleave to his wife, and they too shall become one flesh. So then they are no more two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Messages for the medical world. The good news and the bad news. One flesh. To be able to control these evil angels, jinns slash souls, you, even more efficiently, to be able to discipline you and teach you to be good, God decided to create human animals that would blend in with the rest of nature. These creatures would be living animals breathing air, and having the same body functions as the others. They would also have to have the same selfish animal instincts, that is, living by survival of the fittest, but would not be evil. Animals are not evil like you. They are only animals, and do not know any better than to live by following their natural animal instincts. So God created Adam, man, then created Eve, woman, from Adam's rib, making her flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. And he gave the simple story to Moses in Genesis and later to Muhammad in the Quran. Listing the family trees of all the people would have made Genesis, the Bible, the Quran into a library of 10 to 20 volumes. And they are already so big that many people allow Satan to intimidate them into not reading them because of their size. Once the human animals had been created God breathed life into them, human life. Surah 15.29 When I have fashioned him in due proportion, and breathed into him my spirit, fall ye down into submission inside him. Lucifer and his angels, you, were then given a choice, and had to decide whether or not to submit to human limitations, and being reprogrammed to be good, little by little, over many human lifetimes, and thousands of earth years, or to sit and wait for the fire to destroy you. Surah 1530 So the fallen angels submitted themselves, all of them together. All of the evil angels, jinns, you, except Lucifer, Iblis, himself, chose to submit to being locked inside of Adam and Eve's making human plus beings. Revelation 3.7 He that closes and no man opens, and he that opens and no man closes. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These things said, He that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. Later, when Jesus said to his disciples, These things I do, you will do, and more than these. John 14:12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes in me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. He was referring to, if and when they earned their pardons, they would be given back their divinity and superhuman powers, which would allow them to do even more incredible things than he could do while locked inside the Son of Mary. Remember that he too had to submit to human limitations so that people could see him and follow his example. I am the way you have to be. The reason that Lucifer, now called Satan, is so powerful is because he refused to submit to human limitations, being locked inside of a human animal and learning to be good, so he still has his memory and his superhuman powers. He refused because of his incredible arrogance, which has caused him to be banished from heaven along with you in the first place. Surah 7.11 It is we who created you and gave you shape. Then we bade the fallen angels submit to Adam, and you submitted, 
not Iblis Lucifer, he refused to be of you who submitted. Surah 15, 31 to 44. Except Iblis Lucifer, he refused to be among those who submitted themselves to human limitations. The I Am said, O Lucifer, what is your reason for not being among those who submitted themselves? Lucifer said, I am not one to submit myself to man whom you did create from sounding clay, from mud molded into shape. I am Yahweh said, Then get thee out from here, for you are rejected, accursed, and the curse shall be on you until the day of judgment. Lucifer said, O Lord, give me then respite till the day the dead are raised. I am Yahweh said, Respite is granted you till the day of the time appointed. Lucifer said, O my Lord, because you have put me in the wrong, I will make wrong fair-seeming to them on the earth, and I will put them all in the wrong, except your servants among them, sincere and purified by your grace. The I am Yahweh said, This way of my sincere servants is indeed the way that leads straight to me. John 11.25 for over my servants no authority shall you have, except such as put themselves in the wrong by following you. And verily, hellfire has the promised abode for them all. Matthew 8.22 To it are seven gates, for each of those gates, the seven deadly sins, is a special class of sinners assigned. Satan asked God to reprieve him until the last day, and the Lord granted his wish so that he could use Satan to tempt the human plus being, you. Satan swore to attack you all, by seduction, lies, etc., from in front and from behind, and from your left and from your right. Surah 7.15-20 The I Am Yahweh said, Be thou among those who have respite. He said, Because you have thrown me out of the way, lo, I will lie in wait for them on thy straight way. Then I will assault them from before them and behind them, from their right and their left, nor will you find in most of them gratitude for your mercies. I am Yahweh said, Get out from this disgrace and expelled. If any of them follow you, hellfire will fill with you all. Matthew 8.22 O Adam, dwell you with your wife in the garden and enjoy its good things as you wish. But approach not this tree of the knowledge of evil, lies, or you run into harm and transgression. Then began Satan to whisper suggestions to them, bringing openly before their minds all their shame that was hidden from them. Before, he said, your Lord only forbade you this tree, lest you should become angels or such beings as live forever. 1544. To it are seven gates for each of these gates, the seven deadly sins, is a special class of sinners assigned. And from inside the enemy within, because he considers all of you to be traitors to him, for blaming him, having submitted to human limitations, and trying to learn to be good, this is why he is now your enemy. If you follow him now, he will reward you with the only thing that he has to offer, that is, worldly material treasures that you cannot keep, and animal pleasures of the flesh. If you do follow him, it will be into the fire, execution. You strive to be good. Satan will attack you from every direction to try to pull you back into his control, because when you do good in the world, you become a threat to him. That is when you need 100% faith that, with the faith, God protection from evil, Ephesians 6.10-18 and Surah 2.257 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. 
above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying constantly, without ceasing, with all prayer and supplication, in the Spirit, and watching thereunto, with all perseverance and supplication for all holy people. Surah 2, 257 God is the protector of those who have faith. From the depths of darkness he will lead them forth into the light. Of those who reject faith and patrons are the evil ones, Enoch 15, 8. From the light they will lead them forth into the depths of darkness. They will be companions of the fire to dwell therein forever. Whenever you let Satan deceive you into thinking that you cannot win against injustice just because you are vastly outnumbered and completely surrounded, example, fighting City Hall, Ephesians 6.12, when, if you didn't let Satan deceive you, you could win by trusting in God and wearing his armor. You are telling God that you think Satan is more powerful than he is. Ephesians 6.12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the ruler of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That is ridiculous because God sent Satan here and keeps him here against his will, which is why over thousands of years Satan has become more and more bitter and twisted. He is now so sick and depraved that I feel sorry for him. You can always win against injustice with enough faith as long as you talk to God, follow his orders, and have 100% faith, because he will be with you every step of the way. That does not mean that it will be easy, but then no one said life in prison would be easy. You will have to fight every step of the way, but with 100% faith you can use the force to overcome all obstacles when you are doing God's will for you. The entire world cannot stop you from winning. If you lose your faith, you will lose the battle. However, if you keep going forward and do not let Satan scare you by holding onto your faith in God's protection, following his will, you cannot lose. In any case, these problems in your lives are only tests to see whether you are willing to fight for God against Satan. You should not see these things as problems but as an opportunity to earn points towards your remission. There are no such things as problems. They are only solutions waiting to be found. They are only problems in your mind or frame of mind. If you do not recognize them as problems, then they are not problems, but solutions waiting to be found. You should be grateful for these opportunities to fight to show your worth and these evil people what you are made of it is how you face up to these tests and overcome them that builds your character, spiritual strength, willpower, makes you stronger, and makes you who you are. Don't fight for selfish reasons and stay calm, because your human emotions, fear, anger, aggression, etc., will cloud your judgment and block God's message and the force, and you will lose. The force can only be used for knowledge and defense not for aggressive physical attack. You will lose because Satan will use your anger and aggression against you by causing you to say things that you do not really mean to people who may have helped you if you had not insulted and alienated them with your anger and aggression. Once you have established who is friend and who is foe, fight your foe, no matter what position he may hold. Remember that all men are created equal and still are in God's eyes. Don't make people into false gods and worship them. You have been commanded not to do so. Ten Commandments. If you do, you will defeat yourself before you start. If you fight with human emotions, you will block out the force. And then, Satan can sidetrack you, lead you off in another direction, and keep you bogged down, arguing with someone who probably could have helped you and sped you on your way. Fight with your spirit and determination, not with your fists, except in self-defense. Keep calm and smiling at all times, listening to God's guidance. Then go forward and conquer. It is that simple. These things are sent to try, test us.
do not complicate matters with organized religion and superstitious nonsense. Keep it simple. Good God and Devil D. Evil. That is all that there is to it. Organized religions were invented by Satan to deceive you and complicate everything. Don't let him fool you. You have to fight for God, good, against evil, to pass tests, and to prove to God that you have genuinely changed sides and can be trusted. Fighting with Satan against God is what got you sent here. So the only way you can prove to God beyond any shadow of a doubt that you have genuinely changed sides and want to be good is by fighting here and now for good God against the devil evil look for fights the bigger the better the bigger the fight the more points you can earn towards your remission look for fights that need fighting for the benefit of everyone not just your own selfish reason even if you do not look for fights they will come to you there is so much injustice in this world that you are bound to come up against it and when you do that will be your fight it will then be up to you as to whether you decide to fight for good god against injustice evil devil and by winning help to make the world a better place for yourself and everyone else to live in or to surrender to and suffer from the injustice thereby allowing it to continue and grow making the world even more evil and unjust for yourself and everyone else to have to live in and suffer from all that is necessary for evil to triumph is for those who want to be good to do nothing to stop it if you decide to fight as you should each battle that you fight will train and prepare you for the next one which will be bigger and more difficult and which will in turn train you for the next one which will be still bigger and so on against people who are more and more powerful and evil However, you must never make it personal, or lose your temper, self-control. Don't get angry, get determined. Always remain humble, even in victory, because you could not have won without God's help. Then, when you have passed the ultimate test, which is to be just like Jesus, in thought, word, and deed, at all times, under all circumstances, always doing for others, you can go home. It's that simple. It may be simple. But it's not easy. You have to prove yourself and fight for the right to go home against all odds. But with 100% faith, the force will be with you always to protect you every step of the way, providing that you do not lose your faith in his protection. People say, if there is a God, let him prove it to me. Just who do they think that they are that God should need to prove anything to them? It is they who are going to be executed not God, and is exactly the same stupid, arrogant attitude that got them sent here in the first place. If you apologize and have real faith, then God will prove to each and every one of you that He is real. John 7:17. 7, you will not see Him because you need to keep faith. John 7:17. 7, if any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Human plus beings, as you know them, are a combination of four things, and they are a human animal, the body that you are temporarily using, with its own separate life, human and mortal. John 3, six. That which is born of the flesh is human, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit, a spirit being, a human plus being. A soul, the real you, which is spirit slash energy, Venusian the immortal, John 3 6. The Holy Spirit, the devil, that is, two telepathic voices that every normal human plus being has in his head. When a human baby is born, it has no soul, but it is alive and breathing with its own human animal life, Surah 1530, before the soul enters the body. So the fallen angels submitted themselves, Luke 9.55, all of them together. Some never have a soul because they are so substandard that they are of no use being unable to be used to teach a soul anything, not even humility. At the other end of the scale, a totally senile person is a living human animal left alive after the soul has left it. 
The human body is nothing more than a very sophisticated, by human standards, organic living computer that self-reproduces and self-repairs if it is not too badly damaged. It is a combination of smaller computers, example brain, kidneys, liver, etc., collectively making up the whole, pre-programmed to have selfish animal instincts that your soul has to learn to overcome. The physical human brain operates the body and its emotions, but your mind and its feelings belong to your soul. That's why Jesus said that the flesh is worthless and that it is only the spirit, soul, the real you, that has value. John 3, 6 and 6, 3. That which is born of the flesh is human. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. A spirit being, human being. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words, truth, that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. It would serve absolutely no useful purpose for a soul to enter into a baby whilst it's still inside a woman's body for months. The reason that the soul is placed inside the body, as has already been explained, is to learn that it could not possibly learn anything inside a baby that is inside a womb inside a woman's body. A short period of time after the baby's birth it undergoes a change and suddenly has recognition and awareness that is when the soul has entered the body along with the Holy Spirit and the devil, the enemy within. The Holy Spirit, or God, the good voice, is planted inside the human animal body with and connected to the soul. It is the soul's telepathic communication with God to try to simplify things for you to be able to understand more easily if you can think for a moment of God as being like a master computer and memory bank, fountain of knowledge, with the Holy Spirit as the soul's connection and personal computer terminal linked to the Master One, by which each soul is told and taught privately, individually and personally, what is good and what is evil by the Lord, then you will have a better understanding of how things work. You can request and receive information from God by learning to use your telepathic connection, the Holy Spirit, 1 John 2.27. But the anointing which ye have received from him abides in you, and you need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even like it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. Seek and ye shall find, but only if you seek with all your heart, Jeremiah 29.13, and in childlike humility. And ye shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart. Unfortunately, all you ever do is ask him to give you this or that, or to do this or that for you. You never ask him what you can do for him, do you? Isn't that very selfish and one-sided? The other voice that everyone has in their head, and knows perfectly well it is evil, is obviously the devil's voice. God will only answer your questions if they are the right kind of questions and if you ask Him in the right way, with the correct attitude, and then only if the answer will help you spiritually, not materially, unless it will help you in some way to complete the task He has set for you, or is a genuine need, not a want. He will answer you when you are ready for the answer, which may not be when you think you are ready for it. You may get an answer immediately, or in an hour, or a week, a month, a year, or even ten or more, but you will get the answer exactly when you are ready for it, and you will be reminded, as you were given the answer, of exactly when it was that you asked the question. Then you should realize yourself that when you asked the question, you weren't ready for the answer, and first had to be taught to understand the answer and were only ready for the answer when you were given it, that's when you really ought to say thank you. He will help you with everything you do if you ask him to. He will not help you to do anything that is wrong for you or anyone else. So, if you don't get an answer, you are asking the wrong things, and or in the wrong way, or you are not ready for the answer. If and when you start to do his will, he will also provide for you materially, but only if you believe it he will. And then, 
only what you need to be able to do his will and probably not what you want which would be wrong for you if you have more than you need someone else satan is paying you learn to want only what you need to be able to do his will god will only give you what you need and no more so that he can keep you on a short leash and under control to enable him to guide you more efficiently if he gave you more than you need he would lose control of you and you may go astray being less dependent on his supply continuing this short leash situation also lets him test your faith to the last second before he supplies your need if you are doing his work he knows what you are going to need before you do and is already arranging the supply before you even feel the need that is why Jesus told the man who wanted to be perfect that as well as keeping the commandments as he said that he had done all his life, he must sell his possessions and give the money to the poor. The poor was the disciples' collective purse, kitty or bag, that Judas kept, John 12:6), thereby placing himself completely in God's hands because only then could God teach, provide for, and control him efficiently. Matthew 19:21, John 12:6. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the poor and bear what was put therein. Matthew 19:21. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and put it in the purse, kitty, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. When you work for him, and thereby your own salvation, it is a partnership. You have to complete the task, and he has to supply the tools and materials. He will otherwise. How could he expect you to finish the job? You just have to have faith and trust in him. He will not fail you, but he will make you wait until the last second to test your faith in him and his supply. It's like being on a magical mystery tour and can take you anywhere on earth wherever he can use you and teach you best. It is fun and magical, real magic. God has to provide for you and for you to eat and drink in order to keep body and soul together. So a human animal body is only a prison cell for the soul within a prison, earth, millions of miles from home. Maximum security, but open prison from which no one has ever escaped and from which no one ever will. That is why mankind, even if allowed, would never find human life anywhere except on this planet. There is life throughout the universe, but not human life, because the human body is not needed anywhere else except on this prison planet to serve the sole purpose for which it was designed and created. God created the human plus being, human animal body plus soul, so that he can discipline the soul being and punish it if and when it does wrong. A soul in its free state is energy and therefore invisible to the human eye. It does not feel heat, cold, hunger, thirst, or pain in any and all of its various forms, and therefore cannot be punished and disciplined, only destroyed. Unlike humans, it has no needs. Revelation 7.16 They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. It is not possible to teach an evil soul in its free state to be good by sending it to bed with no supper because it does not get hungry. It is not possible to smack its backside because it does not have one, and in any case, it does not feel pain. The soul is normally locked inside the human animal body for the lifetime of the body and is locked in such a way that it becomes an integral part of the body. Revelation 3 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. And therefore feels whatever the body feels. Then, by inflicting pain on the body, the soul feels it, and so can be punished to varying but exact degrees, depending upon what it deserves, by the various types and severities of pain. Example, physical, mental, heartache, hardship, disabilities, and deformities, etc. This is all designed to teach humility 
and the destroying of self, selfishness. All pain is attached to the self, and when the self goes, so does all pain. Life is a perpetual crucifixion, designed to destroy your selfishness, greed, and materialism. God talks to the soul by telepathy, using the good voice, which is the same voice that Satan, using the lies of religion and superstitious nonsense, has deceived you all into believing is your conscience. It is not your conscience. It is God talking to each and every one of you by telepathy, via your connection, the Holy Spirit. Many of you say, why doesn't God talk to me? He does, to each and every one of you, but you don't listen to him. Your real conscience is you, and what you decide to do in a test. When Satan tempts you, and God tells you, with his good voice, not to do what he says, and that what Satan says is wrong, what you decide to do is your conscience. You are your conscience, not the good voice, and you are each independently responsible for your own soul. It doesn't matter what everyone else does. They are not responsible for your soul. You are. They are responsible for theirs, whether they believe it or not. Satan talks to your animal body and has deceived you into thinking that you are no more than a crude, smelly animal with obscene body functions when you are really spirit and only temporarily imprisoned in the crude animal body that you are using at the moment, which has to eat, go to the toilet, get old, wrinkled, and die, etc. You seem to want to believe Satan and that you are no better than a smelly animal. You don't seem to want to be divine again. Satan tries to talk you into enjoying what feels good physically to the animal. Example, sex, egotism, materialism, selfishness, competition, superiority, the inflicting of pain, killing, beating, depravity, perversion, etc. to try to get you as low as he is so that you will never be able to go home and he is the serpent always eating dust as low as you can get genesis 3:14 and the i am yahweh god said unto the serpent because you have done this you are cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field upon your belly shall you go and dust shall you eat all the days of your life you being really spirit will never get true and lasting joy or satisfaction from animal pleasures as nice as they can be, it is self-defeating and a vicious circle. The more you try, the more you feel you need, the worse things become. A perfect example of this is nymphomania, where the subject confuses love with sex, which, being animal, does not bring true satisfaction and spiritual fulfillment. Satan then, from within, deceives them into thinking that, if they get enough sex, they will be fulfilled, and they try desperately to get enough sex. Unfortunately, Satan is a liar and has tricked them once again and they run around desperately in a vicious circle. The more sex they get, the less fulfilled they feel, so they try even harder and harder, becoming more and more lost, lonely, desperate, and confused. You are not an animal. You are spirit. Animal pleasures alone will never satisfy your souls, your need for spiritual love and fulfillment. God, the source of all spiritual love, God is love, is the answer to every question, problem, or illness in your life. Once you have found God and acknowledge Him as your Father, you automatically have the solution to every problem and illness so long as you have direct contact and do what He tells you to do, His will. Learn to know the difference between real love and animal sex or lust. The reason or logic behind God designing human plus beings is that the soul has to overcome and control the animal. Then it is to give love, spiritual and pure, and affection, human, and to always do for the benefit of everyone. You have to overcome both animal and spiritual selfishness, thereby making it twice as difficult to achieve, and so consequently making the end result twice as effective. This was the demonstration given by Jesus on the cross when he controlled the animal that he was temporarily using, which was made by Mary's body with God's help and then used it for the benefit of everyone on earth by taking upon himself the sins of the whole world. He controlled it and used it to the extent that he voluntarily suffered the agony of the cross, giving up his human life to show the ultimate example, destroying the self with perfect control, voluntarily for the benefit of others. The perfect example of unselfishness, you must learn that degree of control.
2,000 years and no one understands what the demonstration of the cross really means. The cross is not to be worn around your neck. It is to be worn inside. Hold your arms horizontally, look in the mirror, and you will see your cross. Your cross is your selfishness that you must overcome and destroy. The cross of self-sacrifice, that is, voluntary destruction of your own selfishness by the giving up of your own human material interests for the benefit of everyone else's spiritual well-being, thereby setting a good example for others to follow by your deeds, not words. I am the way, follow me, which did not mean getting up off your backside and following him down the street. It means that Jesus is the way that you all have to be before you can follow him back to heaven, home. To do that, you must ask yourself 24 hours a day in every situation, what would Jesus do, say, or think in this situation? Then, before doing, saying, or thinking anything, you must wait and listen for, and to, the good voice. Then, go forwards guided and protected to victory. While in incredible agony, Jesus said, Forgive them, you, all of you, because you do not know what you are doing. The people did not know what they were doing because they were out of control and in Satan's control. And that is the very reason why Jesus came to show the way home in the first place. The people were out of control because they could not control the animals that they were locked inside of and using and had been deceived by Satan who used their religious arrogance against them. God talks to the soul and tells it how to be good. Satan talks to the human animal body that you are using and tries to get it to make you do what is wrong for your soul, the real you. Your soul, you, could easily control the body you are using if it were not for Satan. However, because Satan is more powerful than you are, you alone can never beat him. That is why you need God's help 24 hours a day in direct contact in order to get it so that you can do his will. Once you have God's help, he controls Satan, leaving you free to control your animal and spiritual selves, and things become a lot easier. As you progress, you become more and more dependent on God and become a child of God, adopted, until depending on him becomes second nature, and as he helps you, your faith in and love for him continually increases, and with that, your inner peace. The more progress you make, the happier and more relaxed you become. Real happiness, spiritual joy, and spiritual satisfaction in your own progress and achievement, both physical and spiritual. As you progress, the tests become more and more difficult so that the more you need God's help as Satan tries harder and harder to pull you back. Eventually, you actually get to know God as a person and at that point, it is no longer a belief but a knowledge and a loving personal relationship of father and child. As you are getting to know God, Satan will try harder and harder to pull you back, so you will also get to know him, how he operates, and just how evil, sick, and insane he really is. From what he does and says to you to try to frighten you or bribe you into stopping. Once you know Satan and exactly how he operates, you will then be able to beat him. You have to know your enemy before you can beat him. The more you get to know God, the more you see how awe-inspiringly wonderful, loving, wise, compassionate, and merciful he is, and the more you wonder how you ever managed to be so blind. You also wonder how you ever managed to live without him and his divine love surrounding and protecting you from all ills. You will then learn to love and enjoy doing his will and receiving reward ever-increasing spiritual and therefore true happiness, joy that no man can take away from you, then you will be so full of love, peace, and joy that you will actually know what it feels like. Therefore, the true meaning of my cup overflows, runneth over, and fully understand and live Psalms 23. A Psalm of David. The I am Yahweh is my shepherd and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the way of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
you anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the I Am Yahweh forever. It is wonderful beyond words to stand or live in the valley of the shadow of death and fear nothing and no one, knowing that as long as you believe, he will protect you. Serenity is not freedom from the storm, but peace brought about by true faith amidst the storm. This kind of peace and joy is not temporary and fleeting like silly human peace and happiness. It is eternal, like your soul, providing you survive the last day, and no one can take it away from you, except you yourself, if you lose your faith. The Torah, the New Testament, and the Quran are not religious books. They are a guide to going home. Many people think that if they live what they consider to be a good life, then God will or should help them. It does not work that way, because only God knows what is good. You are bad, or you would not be here, and so is your judgment. If you do what you think is good, it is usually wrong, not only for yourself, but for those around you, and the good of all. God being unselfish always does what is best for all concerned, and not just for one individual. What you think is good may be good for your body, but not for your soul, which is actually the real you, the only thing of real importance. Why do you think God went to all this trouble to try to save your soul instead of just executing you if you are only a human animal that has to die anyway? The Lord sent you here, and He is the only one who knows exactly what each soul has to learn on an individual basis, and therefore He is the only one who can teach you. That is why organized religions are totally wrong, because they build a wall between you and God, preventing your direct contact in your free thinking and reasoning process. This is exactly what Satan wants, and that is why he invented organized religions. Never underestimate Satan. Never underestimate Satan. If you do what you want to do, you are running in circles, doing yourself and no one else any good, being lost and confused, going nowhere, continually hurting yourself and others, suffering, and Satan will lead you astray and into the fire. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line, and if you do God's will and let him teach you and help you, you will then be going in a straight line. You will also no longer be trying to swim against the flow and arrive home in the shortest possible time in the least possible waste of effort. He will even supply directly the energy force for you to do what he wants you to do, to make it even easier for you, and he will cheer you on to victory. God does not want you to be here. He wants you to learn to be good and to come home as soon as possible. That is all he has always wanted of you. God is very sad because he misses you and he wants you to come home. But he cannot let you come home until he is certain that you will be good and not cause any more trouble or hurt anyone. Mika 6 8. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the I am Yahweh require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God? Home has many names here, like Heaven, Nirvana, Valhalla, Utopia, Zion, the Happy Hunting Ground, Paradise, etc. But it is not an ideological, abstract place. It is the Morning Star, Venus which is a real physical planet. How can you do God's will unless you tell him that you want to do his will and ask him to tell you exactly what he wants you to do second by second? Ask him privately with thoughts, not words, and listen for his reply in your mind. Also ask him to revitalize your Holy Spirit, to reinforce it. Ask him to come inside you and give you strength to be able to do his will and overcome Satan by teaching you how to use the force. No human prophet can be with you all the time to teach you. Only God can do that, and he will if you ask him to. He is waiting patiently for you to ask. You are never alone. You just cannot see your guardian angels, but they can see you. They know exactly what you are doing, thinking or saying every second of your life. Job 42.2 I know that thou can do everything, and that no thought can be withheld from thee. 
Among Lucifer's followers, there were many weak-willed souls who were misled by him and deceived by his lies into fighting against God. There were others who were really his friends and accomplices who had helped him plan and organize the rebellion and who fought eagerly with him for their own selfish reasons. Here in prison, God wanted good to overcome evil, so he used the natural supremacy of the male species and locked Satan's friends into female human animals and the less evil souls into male human animals, so that the males, being stronger, could control the females and teach them to be less evil and selfish. 1 Corinthians 11.3 But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of the Christ is God. 1 Timothy 2.11-12 Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Before we go any further, and some of you wrongly decide that I must be a woman-hater, let me state the true fact. That is, I love women more than any man that has ever lived. I will explain the illogicality of your wrong assumption to you, if you make it, at the end of this chapter. So, for now, please just allow me the benefit of the doubt, accept what I say, and continue reading for your own good. A soul, the real you, has no sex. It is the body that the soul is temporarily using that has a sex. So you, the soul, are neither male nor female, nor even human. If and when a soul locked inside a female body learns to be a perfect woman in God's eyes, not yours, it has then earned promotion and the right to be locked inside a male body in its next human lifetime. See Gospel of Thomas, Log 114, 20-26. In the King of Kings Bible, it is chapter 16 of the book of Thomas. Simon Peter said to them, Let Mary go out from among us, because women are not worthy of the life. Jesus said, See, I shall lead her so that I will make her male, and she too may become a living spirit, resembling you males. For every woman who makes herself male will enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Each time that a human animal body that you have been using dies, you are unlocked from it and taken into the astral plane, paradise, which is here but in another dimension that cannot be seen with human eyes, where you are asked what you have learned and you have your now past human lifetime that you have just lived shown to you and you are told paradise, para, dice, in order to be told what you have done right and what you have done wrong. That life is then summarized, and the evil that you have learned in that lifetime is erased from your memory, along with which human you were. But the good that you have learned is retained. You are then sent back into this material plane, and locked inside another body to learn some more. The kind of body and surroundings will vary, depending on whether you are to be punished and taught humility, or whether you are to be rewarded. You cannot remember what human you were previously because that would cause you and everyone else a lot of pain. Example, if an old man dies and came back as a baby, remembering who he had been, and went to see his wife, now his widow, from his previous lifetime, it would cause her, himself, and his new parents a lot of pain that would serve no useful purpose. Another reason that you are not allowed to remember what human you were is because, being the materialistic, selfish people that you are, if you could remember who you had been, you would go and try to claim what were your possessions, wouldn't you? As the object of being here is to learn to be unselfish, good, and unmaterialistic, allowing you to remember would be counterproductive. Also, you wouldn't want to be able to remember being a murderer, or a rapist, or being murdered, would you? What you do remember is all the good that you have learned. All those things that you know are right and that no one in your present lifetime has taught you, you have learned in your previous lifetimes. If you lived a good life, you advance and shorten your sentence. If you live a bad life, you go backwards and are punished. If you live a half and half type of life, you stay at the same place, same spiritual level, and just get a new body to use. The trouble with staying at the same place or going backwards is that you are running out of time 
to earn your pardon. The higher you climb, the harder it gets, and the more chance you have of making a mess of things, and going backwards, the more you need God's help. An evil soul cannot learn everything it needs to know as a man or as a woman. It has to be a gradual progression from one to the other in order to learn and gain experience from both. After, however, many female lifetimes of going forwards if good and backwards if bad, that it takes the soul locked inside a female body to learn to be a perfect woman in God's eyes, which means a perfect lady, wife, and mother, when the human animal body that it is using dies and the soul is taken into the astral plane, it is congratulated on its achievement and then promoted and sent back into a male body. Once the soul gets a male body, it has to start all over again from the beginning, but as a man, going forwards and backwards through many male lifetimes until it learns to be a perfect man, that is, like Jesus the Nazarite. Then, when the animal body dies, the soul is taken into the astral plane, it is congratulated on its achievement, and sent home to the morning star. Revelation 2, 26 and 28. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him I will give power over the nations, and I will give him the morning star. Where it regains its real identity, family, memory, superhuman powers, freedom, and does not have to suffer being a human anymore. It then lives forever in its real self with good people and can travel freely around the universe if it so wishes or stay at home. The souls that are locked inside female bodies are closer to Satan than to God on a spiritual level because they have not yet learned the spiritual qualities that they need to have in order to be able to qualify to become a man. They are therefore much more easily manipulated and used by Satan and have been used successfully throughout history to destroy relatively good men, example Adam and Eve, Samson and Delilah, King Arthur, Pendragon, and Queen Genevieve, and the list is endless. 1 Timothy 2.14 And Adam was not deceived, but the woman, being deceived, was in the transgression. Allowing yourself to be manipulated and used by Lucifer, Satan, is what got you sent here. You must learn willpower not to allow yourself to be manipulated and used by him before you can go home. The more willpower you learn to help you resist his influence, the higher spiritual level you attain. That is why men are on a higher spiritual level and harder for him to use, and women are on a lower spiritual level and easier for him to use. Men are supposed to love God first and women second, keeping women under control and teaching them by setting them a good example as well as by words and advice. 1 Corinthians 11.3 But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of every woman is the man. The head of Christ is God. 1 Timothy 2.11-12 Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. That is why God said from the beginning that the woman can never be equal to men until they earn their own right to be a man. Genesis 3.16 Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and your desire shall be subject to your husband, and he shall rule over you. 1 to 3. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you, remembering in all things, and keep the ordinances, as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of every woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. That is why God said from the beginning that the woman can never be equal to men until they earn their own right to be a man. Genesis 3.16 Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and your desire shall be subject to your husband, and he shall rule over you. 1-3 be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you, remembering in all things, and keep the ordinances, 
as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of every woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Sirah 2, 2.28 Divorced women shall wait concerning themselves for three monthly periods, nor is it lawful for them to hide what God has created in their wombs, if they have faith in God and the last day, and their husbands have the better right to take them back in that period, if they wish for reconciliation. And women shall have rights similar to the rights against them, according to what is equitable. But men have a degree of advantage over them, and God is exalted in power and in wisdom. Surah 4.34 Men are the protectors and maintainers of women, because God has given the one more strength than the other, and because they support them from their means. Therefore the righteous women are devoutly obedient, and guard in the husband's absence what God would have them guard. As to the woman on whose part ye fear disloyalty and ill conduct, admonish them first, next refuse to share their beds, and last beat them lightly. But if they return to obedience, seek not against them means of annoyance, for God is most high, great above you all. Read the Gospel Truth of Thomas, Log 1, 14, 20-26, in the King of Kings Bible, it's Thomas, chapter 16. Simon Peter said to them, Let Mary go out from among us, because women are not worthy of the life. Jesus said, I shall lead her, so I will make her male, that she too may become a living spirit, resembling you males. For every woman who makes herself male will enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. You cannot serve God and be a woman's liber. The two things are totally incompatible, because God has said repeatedly that women are not men's equal. Genesis 3.16 Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrows and thy conception in sorrow. Thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be subject to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. 1 Corinthians 11, 1-3 Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of every woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. 1 Timothy 2, 11-15 let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was the first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, if they continue in faith, in charity, and holiness with sobriety. They are also incompatible because they are complete opposites. Serving God is based on humility, accepting his teachings, and women's liberation is based on arrogance and refusing to accept God's teachings. Man, and not woman, was created in God's image, and first, all of the great prophets were men, and so were all of Jesus' disciples. Now you know why. Blue for a boy, God's color, and pink or red for a girl. Satan's color, red dragon slash serpent. There are clues everywhere in life and in nature. All of the prophets were masters of their own households. The selfish soul has to be a woman first to be taught through motherhood to be less selfish and the meaning of lasting spiritual love instead of human animal emotion. Once a woman becomes a mother, she should become less selfish, putting her child's needs first and her husband's too because he shall provide for and protect her and his child. She has to learn self-sacrifice and an understanding of real love instead of emotion. 1 Timothy 2.15 Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. Men understand real spiritual love better than any woman. Men have already learned to love spiritually, whereas women are emotional human animal emotion. This is proved by the fact that when a marriage breaks up, the woman can have sex with somebody else, fall madly emotionally in love with them, 
and never give her husband a second thought, while it takes an average man between three and five years to get over the hurt if he ever does. This is because the man's love is spiritual, real, deep, and lasting, whereas the woman's is emotional, shallow, animal, and like animals, only temporary until she reaches a higher spiritual level, becomes a lady, and closer to qualify to be a man, that is, a perfect woman. That is why God, in his great compassion, usually takes the husband first, because the woman can get over the loss easier than a man could, if he took the wife first. The soul has to be a woman first to prepare it for being a man. Being a woman teaches, through the pain of childbirth, self-sacrifice, and suffering, in the name of real love, crucifixion, which makes them become less arrogant and less selfish, bringing humility and tenderness. Girls were always brought up and taught to care for people, to teach them humility and love through taking care of others, like Jesus taught by washing his disciples' feet. John 13:5. After he poureth water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Nurses are very good examples of this. Motherhood teaches self-sacrifice by putting her children's needs first, if she is a good mother. The fading of a woman's beauty teaches her humility and to change her values from animal attraction and outward show to needing to be loved for her spiritual qualities instead of her looks, that is, spiritual love instead of animal attraction or lust. Women age while men mature and become more distinguished, unless marred by an evil life. This is all designed to teach the soul to be a perfect lady, wife, and mother, and to be humble and unselfish. A real lady, spiritual qualities, not money or titles, has already learned special qualities that are preparing her to become a man in a later lifetime. She has grace and elegance. Without arrogance, it is 100% feminine soft, warm, affectionate, and loving, is self-sacrificing and humble towards her loved ones and people in general, is modest about her body, and does not exhibit her nakedness to anyone except her husband, is a virgin when she gets married, saving her charms unspoiled for the man she loves, a woman almost always falls in love with and never forgets the man to whom she gave her virginity. 1 Timothy 2.15 Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. A lady has progressed from being an animal and attracting people with sex to wanting people to respect and be attracted to her soul, which is the real her. She has also learned the difference between love and emotion, and the last but not least, has learned compassion, which is a godlike quality and the most important qualification needed to become a man. The lowest male spiritual level is above the highest female spiritual level in terms of understanding of spiritual matters of love and compassion. But because a soul has had to start again on becoming a man, there are women who appear to be more intelligent than some men in worldly matters. This is designed so that the two sexes can help each other on the upward climb. Mothers being on a lower spiritual and more human physical level, are equipped to take care of the physical needs of the family's bodies, feeding, cleaning, nursing, choosing and mending, clothes, etc., and giving affection. Dads, being on a higher spiritual level and less emotional, are better equipped to take care of the family's discipline and spiritual guidance. Women, as opposed to ladies, are often moralless, adapting themselves to the morals of their partner and changing when they change their partner and they generally have no code of honor. People say that women can be vicious, callous, bitchy, catty, emotional, all of which are animal attributes, materialistic, scheming, have no compassion or pity and have vicious tempers and tongues. Hell, planet earth, has no fury like a woman's scorn. Man should firmly but gently, like God does, use his superior strength and understanding to maintain discipline and order. Women are more materialistic than men, and men just slave their lives away to buy things for their women, and some work themselves to death in the process. Who wears the jewelry in a family? Silly bits of yellow metal and colored stones. And who has the biggest wardrobe of clothes? Isaiah 
3, 16 to 24. Moreover, the I am saith, because the daughters of Zion are arrogant and walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, and make a tinkling with their feet. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the I am will lay bare their secret parts. In that day the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornaments about their feet, and their headdress, and their crescents. The chains, the bracelets, and the mufflers, the bonnets, and the ornaments of the legs, and the headbands, and the houses of the soul, and the earrings, the rings around the nose, jewels, the changeable suits of clothing, and the mantles, and the wimples, and the curling devices, the glasses, and the fine linen, and the hoods, and the veils, and it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell there shall be stink, and instead of a girdle to tear, and instead of well-set hair baldness, and instead of stomacher a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. Thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war. Once the soul has become a man, it then has to work towards perfecting its understanding of compassion, spiritual love, and selflessness. It should be honorable and moral, fighting evil and injustice, and to protect its family, whilst working towards being a perfect, as far as possible in hell, man like Jesus. A soul is only as good as its word, and only has the same value as the word of honor. There is no such thing as a special word of honor, because every word should be honorable and the truth. You will not bear false witness, tell lies. Ten Commandments, Matthew 5:37. But let your eyes be yes, and your no be no, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Let your communication be yes, yes, no, no, for whatever is more than these comes from devil, de evil. Don't fool yourself with thinking that you are getting away with telling lies because you are not. You are only hurting your own souls. The two sexes in marriage are supposed to become one flesh. Genesis 2.24 Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Matthew 19.5 And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall become one flesh. And N.B. 1 Corinthians 6.16 What? Know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two saith, He shall be one flesh. The two sexes in marriage are supposed to become one flesh, and soulmates becoming not only one flesh, but also one soul, making one complete unified and indivisible body and soul to help each other spiritually and physically on their upwards and homewards climb. They are supposed to create a loving, stable environment, Garden of Eden, into which to bring children and teach their children souls to be good, unselfish, compassionate, and to have an understanding of stable and lasting spiritual love. This teaches spiritual love because in a good, God-fearing family there is no incestual sex, only pure spiritual love. There are varying degrees of masculinity and femininity in order for the two together to make one perfect whole in one flesh. They need to be complementary as well as compatible. A man who is 100% male needs a woman who is 100% female, and a man who is 75% male and 25% female needs a woman who is 75% female and 25% male, so that together they make 100% male and 100% female and make one whole flesh. Matthew 19.6 Wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. Mark 10.8 And they too shall be one flesh, so that they are no more two, but one flesh. The two partners must really be soulmates. That is why Jesus could not find one, because he was an odd man out, and did not belong here in hell. Becoming one soul, striving to be good, against all the world's temptations and opposition, clinging to each other for spiritual survival and life until their human death. 
The family is supposed to cling together against all odds, come hell, earth, or high water, Noah. Unfortunately, marriages are now based on material and, therefore, superficial values instead of spiritual, pure love values, so they do not work. The partners stop trying and are tempted by adulterers and money values, and the marriage breaks down. Both partners must keep God's commandments and help each other to overcome temptations and difficulties. The man is supposed to set a good example for the family and teach them from his higher level of spiritual understanding, and the woman is supposed to learn from him and help him to be a gentle man and to teach their children how to be ladies and gentlemen. The wife should never try to undermine and castrate metaphorically her husband, but should do her best to encourage him to be a man. 1 Timothy 2, 9 through 15. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broiled or plaited hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works, let the woman learn in silence with all subjugation, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was the first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. A family is like a ship, ark, and if it is going to float and not get wrecked, it has to have a captain, father, like the British Royal Navy, and a good first mate, wife, cook and crew, etc. Just like a good first mate is invaluable to a captain, a good woman can help make a good man, and a bad woman could break him, and vice versa. If he let her, by loving her more than God, the divine navigator, to steer a straight course home, that is why a woman should love, honor, cherish, and obey her husband, unless he is trying to get her to do wrong, through good and bad times, and not leave a sinking ship, but help the bailing out, until death, and learn from him, and help and encourage him to be good. From arrival in hell, earth, to qualify to go home, everything is designed to teach unselfishness by the perpetual crucifixion of self. When the self goes, and you are no longer addicted to the material things, but prefer to be addicted to God, good, and spiritual joy and richness, the pain goes with it. The pain is attached to the self, to encourage you to lose it. When you have lost the self, you can go home, where everyone is unselfish and everyone loves everyone spiritually, and you can trust absolutely everyone in heaven. There have been misguided by Satan fanatics throughout history who have known that women are more evil, more easily manipulated by the devil, than men and have killed them while believing that they were doing God's work by destroying evil women and their evil influence, that is, prostitutes, etc. In so doing, they have made themselves more evil than their victims. Only fanaticism can allow the devil to be able to create this kind of totally illogical situation in someone's mind. How can you possibly not be worse than a prostitute if you become a murderer like Jack the Ripper, etc.? Fanaticism, or a closed mind, always leads to trouble, especially religious Satan's invention, fanaticism, because it allows the devil to really get a hold of the soul and deceive it into doing evil while believing that it is doing it for God. Hence, these insane murderers and religious wars, John 16, 1-4. These things I have spoken unto you, that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the churches, yea, the time cometh, that whosoever killeth you will think that he does God's service. And these things I will do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. You must always be balanced, and must not submit to any overwhelming animal emotion. Remember that Satan talks to your animal body, so you must learn control. 
Jesus was perfectly balanced spiritually at all times because he asked for and received God's help, especially when he was being struck and spit upon and his human life was in danger, and you must do the same. God says, you shall not kill, except in self-defense, real and not imaginary, or as punishment in accordance with God's laws and judgments. You must dissuade people from doing evil by setting them a good example or by shunning them to make them ashamed of themselves and love them into changing their ways. Never underestimate the power of the force of spiritual divine love. It is the greatest and most powerful force in the whole of creation. God says you shall not kill except in self-defense, real and not imaginary, or as a punishment in accordance with God's laws and judgments. You must dissuade people from doing evil by setting them a good example or by shunning them to make them ashamed of themselves and love them into changing their ways. Never underestimate the power of the force of spiritual divine love. It is the greatest and most powerful force in the whole of creation. It is also important to understand the use of the force of love in respect of health. I have already explained that your human parents' bodies made the body human animal that you are temporarily using but that they are not really your parents because their bodies did not make your soul the real you just as their parents bodies did not make their souls call no man upon the earth your father your father is in heaven matthew twenty three nine and call no man your father upon the earth for one is your father which is in heaven that does not mean that you should disown each other. Everyone's soul came from the morning star thousands of years ago, and that's why Christ said that his body's mother and his body's brothers, humans, were not his mother and brothers, but that the souls, people, that hear and believe his words and put them into practice, keep the commandments, and do God's will, are his mother and brothers and sisters, relatives. This means that the souls who want to be good and live and eventually go home are his relatives and that the rest are not because they want to continue to be evil and thereby remain his enemy and their souls are going to die on the last day. This explains why the second commandment says love your neighbor as yourself and not just the people of your own household. Mark 12.31 And the second is like namely this Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Your neighbor is not just the man next door, but also the man on the far side of the planet and everyone in between. From the time that Jesus began his ministry right up until his human death on the cross, he called Mary woman and not mother. John 2, 4 and 19, 26. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what am I going to do with thee? Mine hour has not yet come. John 19.26 When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple standing by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. All souls are related because they originally came from heaven and it is the soul that is important. Bodies are only prison cells and worthless. Love all your relatives, not just those of your body. That person that you can see in trouble could have been your great-grandparent reincarnated. Shouldn't you be helping him? When a soul being has learned all that it can in a particular body and environment, it is time to move on to a new body and a new environment to learn some more. And so the body dies. The soul is then unlocked from the body and goes into the astral plane and later on is sent back into its next body to learn something different. If the soul has been good, it gets a healthy body and if it has been very bad, it can get a disabled or deformed body as a punishment to teach it humility. If you are given a healthy body and you always do good, you will always be healthy because your healthy spirit within your body will keep the body healthy. A healthy spirit which lives always in the light will keep its body healthy until it is time for it to move on to a new body and environment to learn some more. The good die young. If you were given a healthy body and you start to do evil and live in the dark, then your evil, unhealthy spirit will poison the body from within and it will become sick, which is part of the punishment, divine justice, for doing or thinking evil. 
If you then stop doing evil and come out into the light and do God's will, your now sick body will heal itself from within. So, if you start to become ill, you should recognize it for what it is, that is, a sign that you have been taking a step in the wrong direction, stop, and instead of running to the medicine cupboard or doctors, ask God where you have gone wrong, then follow his guidance and continue on the right path, and the sickness will get better. However, if you continue to go in the wrong direction, your illness will continue to get worse and worse. Doctors with their drugs, surgery, and obscene machinery temporarily relieve the body's physical symptoms, thereby allowing you to ignore God's signs and continue going the wrong way. And so, unwittingly, by trying to play at being God, they are actually helping Satan and doing you all a great deal of harm. If they weren't there, and or didn't profess to have the answers, you would all have to ask God to help you, which is exactly what he wants you to do, and is why he sent you the sign of being sick, Deuteronomy 28, 58-61, in the first place. If thou wilt not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayst fear this glorious and fearful name, the I Am that I Am, then the I Am will make thy plagues extraordinary, and thy plagues of thy seed, even great plagues of the long continuance, and sore sickness, and long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon you all the diseases of Egypt, which you were afraid of, and they shall cleave unto you. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, them will the I Am bring upon you, until you be destroyed. There are none so blind as those who refuse to see. Everything in life is for a reason. Seek and you will find that reason. But you have to seek in the right place. God, with all your heart. Jeremiah 29.13 And you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. If you were given a sick body as a punishment, karmic debt, and you do good, then your now healthy spirit will start to heal the body from within, or your punishment will be terminated and the sick body will die and you will get a new healthy one depending upon the severity of your punishment and sickness human bodies have to die or there would be no progress no fresh starts no way to control the population explosion and also no way to allow nature's natural process to keep the breed healthy young and strong you cannot have many more bodies than there are souls to use them bodies were only designed to be prison cells for the soul beings, jinns, and are themselves worthless. God has sent many clues for you about the fact that the physical reflects the mental and spiritual, one of which is the story that God wrote using the hand of Oscar Wilde called The Picture of Dorian Gray, which illustrates it perfectly. This story of Dorian Gray and his portrait and his deal with the devil shows perfectly that the physical which Dorian transferred to the portrait by making a deal with Satan reflects the mental and spiritual. Every time Dorian did something evil, the painting of himself became more and more grotesque, evil-looking, wizened and wrinkled, until he could not bear to look at his own evil soul's effect on his body, portrayed on the canvas. There are other clues in the story of Dorian Gray about his reflection, and also about home. In the story, Dorian has a book sent to him by his friend Henry. The book is about evil deeds and how people that do evil deeds start to look evil. The reason why no one suspected Dorian of doing evil deeds was because he looked so handsome, young, innocent, and healthy. They did not know that Dorian had done a deal with Satan, and the painting was looking more and more evil and sick instead of him. Dorian reads this book in the evening by the light of a single bright star. In the King of Kings Bible, it's Revelation 30:16. And there was a great light, and there stood before me the Saviour, the Christ. And he spake thus, and I may know the authority of the angel, and bade watch for the star that was foretold by the prophet Jacob, that you will know the time of the second coming, and I will enter all hearts. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the communities. I am the root source and the successor of David. Ezekiel 21:27 cross reference and the bright and morning star Dorian reads this book in the evening of the light of the single bright star until night falls and he cannot read any more 
This is a clue about home because the only star that could have possibly been the morning slash evening star, Venus, which is the brightest star in the sky and can be seen before the sky goes dark and all the others then appear. Doctors by playing God keep the bodies alive when they should have died and the souls beings jinn should have received a new body are actually causing unnecessary suffering by prolonging people's illnesses and thereby also their punishment and the pain they have to suffer. If they stopped playing at God as they should and let the body die as God intended the suffering would stop and the soul being jinn would get a brand new body human. As already mentioned in chapter 2 mankind must live with nature in order to survive and keep the race healthy. Unfortunately as usual Mankind is living against God and nature, weakening the race and filling the world with more and more sick, crippled bodies, thereby causing the souls that have to use those bodies to have to suffer unnecessarily just so the selfish parents can have a baby. What about the rights of the poor soul that is then forced to have to use that baby body and suffer being permanently sick or crippled? When nature rejects a baby, it is ejected, born prematurely, it is for a very good reason that is because the baby human is not going to be healthy enough to be able to be used properly by a soul being jinn and therefore is rejected then along comes faithless insane man who thinks he knows better than god and builds obscene machines to keep those babies alive so that they can grow up to Ascedra's 621 to be cripples and or suffer from terrible diseases or chronic illnesses causing the souls that have been forced to use those bodies to have to suffer and the parents too and everyone else having to pay extortionate taxes to pay for the expensive machinery and the doctor's wages etc. 2 Acedra 621 And the children of a year old shall speak with their voices. The woman with child pregnant shall bring forth untimely premature children of three or four months old and they shall live and be raised up. The doctors then, by filling the world with sick bodies, have ensured for themselves and the pharmaceutical companies a secure job for life. If those babies then grow up and have children, they then make the situation even worse by passing on and multiplying through their genes the imperfections. Carried to its ultimate conclusion, the entire world would end up being sick and crippled with no one healthy enough to be able to work and pay taxes for or personally take care of the sick or be able to grow food to feed themselves and the sick. The whole thing is self-defeating, with the ever-decreasing healthy population paying more and more taxes to maintain the ever-increasing sick and crippled population, all of which is caused by a lack of faith. All you chronically sick and crippled people have your parents' selfishness, the doctors, and your own and everyone else's insanity and lack of faith to thank for your suffering. When, if you let go and they stop meddling, you could have a brand new, perfectly healthy body to use, instead of suffering in your present one. When you break the rules or have lack of faith in God and His wisdom, you automatically cause yourself to suffer. There is also a very good reason why some people can not have babies, and that is either because their genes of their bodies would create unhealthy babies as explained above or God either does not consider them fit to be parents because they would teach a child the wrong things or he is punishing them for what they did in a former human life which could have been mistreating their children turn to God for your cures and answers not to men natural medicine creams herbal remedies etc and the stitching of wounds, setting of broken bones, delivering babies, and nursing are a natural part of loving and caring for one another. Because of this lack of real faith in God and life after death, with people consequently clinging desperately to the present human life that they have, no matter what the cost, we now have a world full of sick people and overflowing hospitals and some very rich doctors and pharmaceutical companies all of which are a terrific drain on society. Doctors are unknowingly assisting Satan by helping people to continue to go the wrong way, do evil, because they are keeping people's bodies healthy by artificial means. 
they too have underestimated Satan, been conned, and many sincerely believe that they are helping mankind when, in fact, they have been deceived and are actually working for Satan and mankind's destruction. The road to hellfire is paved with good intentions. If God and surgeons are doing what is right, that is, God's will, why do they suffer so much from stress that many of them are heavy smokers and drinkers at best and alcoholics at worst, abusing tranquilizing drugs and have nervous breakdowns? Stress is caused by a lack of faith, by fear and by going against God's will, not by overwork. Overworking causes physical tiredness, not stress. If they are so clever and know all the answers, as you seem to think they do, because you go to them for your answers, why don't they heal themselves? Physician, heal thyself. They cannot and are not clever, and you go to them for help, instead of going to God, as you should. Deuteronomy 32.39 See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive, I wound and I heal, neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. The medical people have made human death almost totally illegal and have removed and hidden it away from society and thereby made it an unfamiliar thing to be feared and avoided at any cost. Human death is a perfectly natural, necessary and good thing and is unimportant because you are not human. It should be a natural part of everyday life and not something to hide away from view and consequently to be feared. It is why your body dies that is important. The death itself does not matter, except if it is murdered or you commit suicide. God takes the attitude that if you want to prolong your own suffering because you have no faith in him and also extend your own sentence and punishment by not moving on to learn new things that you should be learning, then he will let you continue to punish yourselves. You are also, by doing this, wasting what precious little time you have left to earn your pardon. The fire is getting closer by the minute. The answer to every question in life is with God. Don't look to humans for answers or cures. Look to your maker. God is not just a body mechanic like a doctor. He is the designer, builder, and master engineer. Doctors, surgeons, and psychiatrists do not know how to make a human plus being, but God does. They do not even know what a soul, being, jinn is, or where it came from, or what a human animal is and the interrelationship between the two. God does. Get it right with God first, then heal yourself from within, or get your punishment commuted and get a new body to use and a fresh start. Why punish yourselves? You can never beat God. If you could, he would be here instead of you. Being afraid of human death makes absolutely no sense. Being alive, the death line. Spiritual being still alive, not being, you no longer exist. What is there to worry about? As promised earlier in this chapter, I am now going to explain for the benefit of those people who have made the wrong assumption that is, that I must hate women, how their logic upon which they have based this wrong assumption is totally illogical, and how those same people have no idea what real love is. If I hated women, and knowing as I do, what they are doing now is not only harming them, but is ultimately going to cause them to be executed, then surely if I did hate them, I would be telling them to carry on doing what they are doing and advising people to take advantage of them sexually and in other ways so that they will be executed, wouldn't I? What am I doing? I am putting myself into a position where I will have to suffer verbal and possibly physical abuse from the ones who do not want to try to understand in an attempt to help them to save their own lives, not mine. Real love. What are those who falsely claim to love women doing? They are telling lies to women because they are pathetic telling women that they love them to enable themselves to be able to steal sexual favors and thereby are deceiving them and leading them astray, causing heartache, creating unwanted babies, and messing up women's minds and lives, creating terrible havoc in the world. Who really loves you, ladies? Me or them? You decide. Now can you see your own illogic?